Hi. Long time no video like this. What kind of video is this? Well, it's a very rare pleasure. In this video, I get to talk about a role-playing game. Now, I know some of you are saying, what? You talk about role-playing games all the time. This role-playing game, however, was conceived of, put together, and ultimately produced by friends. It's pretty cool. And I got to contribute a little bit as well. This game, The Dark Age of Man, produced by Candlelight Games, and I'll put all the information about, about the authors and the, the people who are involved in the description box down below. This game is the brainchild, let's say, of people that I came to know and like and respect in the heyday of the RPG Brigade. And they were kind enough to continue to participate in talk about role-playing games in the hilariously named RPG Techniques Consortium, where we talk about techniques for play the effects of the things we do when we are playing on the play. How we talk to each other, what effect does that have? How often or in what ways we handle dice and system, and that kind of thing. We talk about the very stuff of play. And as a result of all of that and their own natural talents and drives, they put out the Dark Age of Man. I got my copy about two weeks ago now. And I'm not sure when this video will will surface because I'm ridiculously busy at the moment. But the cool thing about role-playing games is they don't die. They don't get stale. They're never out of date. You can always come back to them and through their lens see a moment in time for the designer. What did they want to share with you about playing? What reaction to their past gaming do they want to show to you? Or what hope about their future gaming do they want to show to you? And that's why we have the Dark Age of Man. Now this is not a review. I'm not going to go through step by step and talk about all the mechanisms of play presented in the Dark Age of Man. If you'd like to see it in action, one of the links you'll find in the description box is to the Roleplay Cafe YouTube channel, which is where Jason and Dell, the primary creative forces behind the Dark Age of Man, where they talked about building the game, where they talked about their struggles in, you know, printing the game, and they talked about their celebration and joy as the print copies came in. It was really interesting and rewarding to be able to watch the development of this game in real time, I guess you could say, and as a record of that process. I'm going to share that link. But also, those of you who are you know, familiar with this channel are no stranger to Ivan Mike 1968 And he and other familiar faces in the actual play stuff on this channel have been running the Dark Age of Man. They got the book, they read it, and they began to apply it. And that's all available. So those links are in the description box. And better yet, Jason and Dell, who wrote the game, did a series of commentary videos where, you know, it's a, it's a reaction or a watch through of the entire thing, and they react to the play as it happens, them watching it live. It's a pretty valuable resource for really understanding how the game reads, how other experienced role players have applied it, and how the designers have thought about that application. So ultimately, what is the Dark Age Man? What makes it stand out? Well, it's a, unsurprisingly, Dark Age setting. And they describe it as minimalist, meaning this is it. The game 
runs to 89 printed pages. A lot of that is an example setting. So it's not an implied setting. It's not like a, a toolbox, which you then have to figure out where you want to use it. As soon as you get the book, you have a place to use it that's tailor-made for the system and shows you an excellent example of the kinds of things that you can do with the game and inspires you right, to have that confidence to leap out and do more with it. So we have this dark age setting in which the players are encouraged to become legendary, right? to be memorable, to make their mark, to make a lasting mark on the world. That's kind of nice, don't you think? But for the Game Master, the Game Master is called a presenter. The Game Master is asked to surrender notions of some notions of preparation. So rather than, you know, buying a, a, a published module and running through its acts and scenes, or following some kind of adventure path, the Game Master is asked to either use or make what's called random seeds. And they'll be using random seed charts which are a 3d6 chart so from 3 to 18 of events that make sense for the time the place and so on so these charts will grow and change as a campaign if you choose to play one continues right events that may be unlikely, may become more likely as things do or do not succeed with the player's activities. Or the reverse. What if the particular region in which you were playing is being plagued by bandits and the characters begin to have success at wearing down and driving off and breaking the spirits of the bandits then bandit raids as a possibility on this random seed chart will become less and less likely the game talks about this it talks about the bell curve produced by a 3d6 roll and how when you're designing your random seed chart the things that should be rare uncommon or highly dangerous or, or whatnot are pushed out to the extremes and the things which should be happening more often or are more likely to happen are planted toward the middle. It talks about being a naive narrator, meaning that you will be improvising. Right? So your, your preparation for play takes as long as it takes you to come up with these entries on your random seed chart of things that make sense for the situation and the context of that situation in your play. Right, so when you start out, maybe you'd want to use one of the areas of play presented, right, which gives you a prepared seed chart for what that place is like. And then as play progresses in that area, you will change that random seed chart. What do you do with the random seeds? Your job is to, on the fly, in play when it makes appropriate sense such as some task has been completed or an amount of time has passed like the next day when the characters move to another area when the characters encounter specific and interesting people as things happen the world is still in motion as I pay attention to this thing over here that thing over there is still in motion. It's not moving through freeze frame snapshots that are waiting for the characters to arrive. The world is in motion once play starts. But as the Game Master, you get to be as surprised by these events 
as the players. And you get to play like the players do by reacting to what is generated by the random C chart. You figure out in the moment how that item fits into the fabric of the world that is being described and interacted with and acted upon and reacted to by the players. You're not playing exactly the same way that the players are, but you're playing in a similar, let's say, layer as the players. You're getting to imagine your response, receive information, and I know what to do. It's kind of cool. So, based largely in improvisation with an easy to use rule set for things like combat or magic with mechanisms that are relevant to the characters interacting in their world and being in in this mold of like the ones who would be king <laughs> you know they they have ambition they have drive they are out in the world trying to make names for themselves there are there are barons and dukes in the world there are monsters in the world there's magic and darkness in the world there's disease of course and there's wild beasts and there's foxes in the hen house and there's missing shipments of vegetables and there are crop destroying fires and so many things which could happen so many things which give them an opportunity to act react and interact with the world and in so doing carve out their place in it the players always get to improvise what am i going to do what am i going to do what am i going to do and in this game the game master gets to do that too it's kind of cool in addition to that we have of course the fantastical elements like wyverns magical spells there's a lot to ex explore in less than 90 pages there's some pretty fantastic art there is a tasteful use of spot color and it opens up with pretty cool cartoon or illustrated look at the world and the play that can arise in it. So a graphical illustration to the world of the Dark Age of Man. A quick primer on where you are playing. Easy to follow, easy to read layout. And a call to action for imagination. Sound good? Check it out. It's available in a variety of different places, such as Lulu and Drive Through RPG in print and PDF. If you start to play it, I'd really like to hear what you do with it, and I'm pretty sure that Jason and Dell would too. So head on over to Roleplay Cafe and let them know. Anyway, until the next time, take care.